Hey guys, I am here today to do the tag I've been talking about. I finally jotted down the questions that I wanted to cover and I'm going to change um, little Niklaus while we chat. Hopefully I can do both and not get too distracted. Um, yeah, but it's a 10 question tag and I am calling it 10 things I love about you. Maybe it will make sense to you once you hear the questions, maybe not, but let's get started. Oh, well, first let me tell you, I'm going to put him in one of my favorite outfits. Usually he wears a long sleeve onesie from this Mother Care line. Um, with this and these overalls, coveralls, um, but we're going to go short sleeve because Niklaus is currently wearing the warmest gear out of all the babies and it's been pretty, pretty warm, pretty hot out, so... Okay, question number one. Most people, or a lot of people, say that they don't agree with having any regrets, and that's probably mostly true for me, or at least I feel it should be. However, if there's a path in your past that you wish you had taken or are supremely curious about what would have happened if you took it, what would that point in time be? Maybe it's where you think would have been your highest path, or maybe it's just something that you think would be cool. Mine would be going back to when I was um, probably, I think, 26 years old. I was training to join the Marine Corps, and I was going to be an officer, a commissioned second lieutenant, Upon my graduation from John Jay College of Criminal Justice, where I was enrolled as in a forensic psychology major. And I was going to do six years as a pilot, as a commissioned officer with the Marine Corps, and then I was going to make a lateral move to the FBI and work my way up to behavioral sciences. Um, fill in my lack of street experience by shadowing with the NYPD Homicide Division and become a criminal profiler. The deeper psychological reason why I didn't do that is my codependence and neediness uh, for love. But the surface level reason was for a guy that I met training for the Marines and ended up moving to Florida where there <clears throat> were no colleges that offered the major and so then I couldn't be in the program because you have to be in a four-year degree program and anyway I just took myself further and further away until I didn't do it at all. So I would go back to that age and I would stay in New York and I would finish my degree and I would follow that plan or otherwise go into the FBI another way I just think I was made for that so number two do you like games and if so what kinds and what is your favorite game I do like games I like certain board games and I love video games my favorite board game is a board game called um, Carcassonne. I think it's from World of Wonder. It's a European game. And it's a tile-based game where you actually build the board as you go. And you're building castles and streams. and It's really, really cool. It's an, there's an online version, free version, called Toulouse. It's the same thing. Um, I also, also love video games. And I would have to say that it's a tough call. I love horror video games. Um, probably my favorite one um, so far has been Silent Hill. <clears throat> I also really love Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> so maybe that's surprising about me to some of you. Okay, number three, Joseph Campbell, the great scholar and gatherer of knowledge that taught about following your bliss 
talked about that being the way to find your life's purpose. And he said, you find the thing that makes you the most blissful, no matter what anybody else thinks, and you spend time there. And that's how you'll discover what your life's purpose is. Whether it's the music that everybody else hates or thinks is silly or, you know, what is it that just brings you that sheer joy that doesn't need an explanation and isn't some deep metaphorical thing? What is that for you? For me, <clears throat> it's reality TV. <laughs> Um, of course, I find lots of deep metaphorical things in it, and I also feel like all, we're all one, and I also feel like um, I can see myself, and we're all reflections of each other, and I can see myself and everyone else, and I can see the things I don't like about myself. But if we're not waxing deep, I just freaking like watching people. I think we've become so separated in community that we sort of fake community. We're watching each other on TV, and I am probably embarrassingly excited for the next season of The Bachelorette. And yes, everybody, I know how contrived it is. <clears throat> Look at this gorgeous boy. Yeah, so what would your what would your silly bliss place be? Okay. So, number 4. What is your biggest little pet peeve? The one that whenever it happens, you have a dialogue that happens in your head and you can't help it. Sometimes you even say it out loud. Mine would be grammar. Yes, I'm a, um, an English literature nerd or a grammar nerd. Um, there are certain mispronunciations of words, misuses of terms, mispronunciations of terms, things that bug me that either my partner says or I hear some people say, but the biggest one that gets me, almost embarrassingly so, is height. Height is not a word. The word is height. There's length and width. And while there are many things in the English language that don't make sense in their inconsistencies, it's not height. It's height. That's my biggest pet peeve. Call it silly, but every time I hear it, I say in my head, or out loud, or both, something about it. Okay. Number... If you could make one unhealthy food healthy, what would it be? Hmm. You know, um, I, I'm almost ashamed to say this. But if I'm thinking right in this moment, the flavor that I used to just love the most, um, okay, no, that's, that's actually not really embarrassing. Pat's Chili Cheeseburgers. There's a place called Pat's in Porchester, New York, and they make these big giant vats of chili where literally it's um, just a sea of reddish black grease and they scoop into it and underneath it is this chili. They're famous. They started Pat's Hubba Hubba. They started in um, Miami. And they make these cheeseburgers, those super thin burgers with the cheese and then a scoop of the chili on top. And man, I used to demolish that back in my days in New York. That's what it would be. Number six, if you were stuck on an island, like the Island of Lost or the island where Tom Hanks was stranded in um, Castaway with Wilson, and but you were there for the remainder of your life and you could only harvest and have three foods for the rest of your life what would they be i would pick um, fresh thai coconuts avocado It's 
a tough call between garlic and turmeric, but I think I'd pick garlic. And it's winning because of flavor. The reason why I would pick those is coconut is full of, um, it's, it's thermogenic, so it boosts the metabolism. It has lots of healthy fats in it. It's full of medium chain triglycerides, which are extremely, like lauric acid, extremely powerful antiviral, antimicrobial, and um, antibacterial. It's very cooling. It is a natural, the water is a natural uh, electrolytes in it and it's delicious and healthy fats healthy fats very important avocado also healthy fats um, very rich in glutathione or helps your body produce glutathione which is really strong for um, detoxification and it's a very 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 good brain food and garlic because it's delicious but it's also a um, helps to cleanse the blood, build the blood, thin the blood. It's a strong antiviral and antibacterial, um, and it's detoxifying, and it's good for the heart. So maybe I'm a nerd, but I also freaking love the flavor of all three things. And if you can make coconut oil, by the way, that is a natural sunscreen. Number seven, what, uh, no wait, that's number 10. We have nine questions, there is no number seven. Number seven, now, if you could change one thing for real, for real about yourself that you think is holding you back from being who you really wanna be, what would it be? And mine would be not caring what other people think. I have to think about that for a second because there's another one that's really close. Yeah, that's what it is because um, I won't, I won't say the other one because that's not fair. It's just one answer. Mine would be not caring what other people think because I wouldn't be motivated by not disappointing others. I wouldn't be bothered. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't play on my people pleasing tendencies. It wouldn't play on my codependent tendencies. It wouldn't, um, and it also wouldn't, I wouldn't be motivated by other people's praise. Again, making, doing things to make other people happy. So that would be the one thing for real, for real. And I really have developed the ability to do that a lot uh, more the older I've gotten and the more I've focused on it. But, uh, but to have it be like permanently fixed, I think it would change a lot of things and would have changed a lot of things in my life. Number eight, what is your superpower? Now, it's probably not flying. It could be telekinesis or it could be um, mind reading, psychic powers, absolutely could be. Um, but something that you consider a superpower that maybe an exaggeration of it would be a typical superpower that you would see reflected in a story. Um, I realized a short while ago that my superpower is love. Um, it can tame the savage beast. It can help people heal from abandonment and, um, My superpower is love. That's what it is. There's so many different ways to explain it that it doesn't actually need explaining. And number nine, which I'm happy we're landing on number nine, um, because that is uh, one of my favorite numbers, and I do, that is the, the highest number of perfection in the Chinese tradition, as I, under, as I have learned it. Um, but I also love odd numbers. Um, number nine, what moves you to tears uh, in terms of being inspired um, gets you every time? It's a two-part question. What one thing inside of you disappoints you or do you wish that you could have? Um, what quality is it that you feel that you 
you wish you had, but you don't think you, you have it. And the reason I'm asking you that is I worked for a short time with a wellness coach. Um, I was lucky to do that through a company I was working with. Um, her name was Nora. And, or, no, her name was Nadia. Her name was Nadia, and she asked me that question. And after I told her what it was, she explained this to me. The reason that it touches you so deeply, this thing, is because you have that power within you, and it's resonating with you. That thing that moves you that you wish you could see in yourself, maybe. It touches you because it resonates with you and because you do have that inside of you. Mine is seeing people accomplish things that matter to them. I have cried watching movies about, you know, landing on Mars. I cried, I think, when they landed the rover on Mars. When people erupt into cheering, when, they're, when their goal and their dream has been accomplished, even if it's something that I don't really care for at all, doesn't matter to me. I'm not really that into space travel but still to see people who have strived for something reached for something and to see them meet that and to imagine that moment of them being in that moment of seeing it happen that fulfillment is overwhelming to me and I almost um, without exception cry in those moments whether it's seeing somebody graduate from something or accomplish a dream or walk or whatever it is and the flip side of that question is what is it that you what is it that you wish that you could have or do that you don't feel you have um, and for me, it's not seeing things through, not completing my goals and my dreams, not finishing what I start. And so you see that the, the thing that moves me and the thing I feel I'm lacking are very, they're, they're the inverse of each other and it touches me because it's in there. So whatever your thing is, it's in there for you too. Okay, I hope that you guys like these questions and I hope that you'll participate in this tag video. It's always fun for me to hear people's answers, to get to know each other a little bit. And um, this is our way of virtually spending time together. So thank you for watching. Thank you so much for stopping by. And uh, I look forward to seeing your tag videos. If you enjoy seeing this little guy and my other babies, of course, please feel free to subscribe. But either way, I appreciate you being here. And until next time, I hope everybody has a wonderful, beautiful evening and upcoming days. Bye for now.